Hi there, and welcome back to Triplicate. And um, you may have noticed, if you're watching this video uh, fresh from it being published, that the channel hasn't had a lot of content out recently, and that is because we have been away for six weeks on our boat, Bonnie Mary. And normally, when you're out on a narrow boat, you just push along and you don't really care how fast you're going. But there were occasions when we sort of kind of did need to know how fast we were going, uh, notably going up the tidal trend. And you only have so much tide to go with, so you've got to make so much pace to get where you're going before the tide turns and you're going against the tide. So we are going to build a speedometer for a boat. Uh, in fact, any application uh, that doesn't go ridiculously fast, it would be suitable for. Uh, and why are we actually building an, a speedo for the boat? Well, let me explain from the air and colder. Okay, so why bother designing and building a speedometer for the boat? Um, when you can get speedometer apps for the phone. That and there it is. And there are two reasons that hopefully the camera will pick up the display there. But it's quite hard to see in what's a fairly bright day. And secondly, Oh, it's actually been quite stable today, but sometimes it just jumps around all over the place. Oh, yes, you can see it. And thirdly, after a bit, I'll, we'll sit here, the phone will go off, and then turn the display off, and I'm able to see it anymore, and then you do something on the phone and using a different app. And anyway, it would be nice to have something that is on like the control panel stroke dashboard of the boat that you can just see at a glance how fast you're going and if you were wondering here we are up the air and colder heading towards Wakefield okay so we've decided we do want to design and build a boat speedometer and so what's it gonna look like well um, what to use for the main display, I guess, is the big question. I mean, I did think about using a sort of ring of LEDs, like a car speedo without a pointer. I don't want to use a physical pointer, too much bother. Um, and I did think about using a graphic display, but uh, that would have to be a big one, because it's got to be seen from about two metres back, clearly, you know, just from glancing at it. So it would need a big display and it would need to be daylight visible, which means it would need to be very expensive. And even then, those daylight visible displays aren't that brilliant in bright sunlight. And yes, the sun does shine occasionally while we're out cruising. So I've gone for seven segment displays uh, using LEDs, uh, which should be nice and bright and easy to read. Um, now I didn't want to pack in a load of features and just have lots of buttons to press and it's just supposed to be there and you're supposed to glance at it and it tells you what you need to know. But uh, I thought I would let it make it read in either miles per hour, kilometres per hour or knots. That's the one on the phone does that. And also um, I thought yeah you could get it to read speed, uh, distance since we set off and average speed. Might as well put a couple of little features in there. Now these guys are select. These guys are actually light sensors. Um, they're used to dim the display if we happen to be cruising at dusk, which does occasionally happen. 
uh, when we're late getting to where we want to be. Um, and they're also double up as buttons because if you stick your finger over them the light will drop down, light level will drop down completely and you use that as a button press. I hope. I have not actually tried this, I'm just assuming it'll work. And if you press both of them at the same time it'll reset the distance and the average speed. So, um, I think the first thing we need to look at is our display. Okay, so this is my little dr actual size drawing of what it's going to look like. You see, with nice big displays, and uh, on it. here we have a box to put it in with a clear front panel, and it's hopefully going to have a printed vinyl adhesive label to do the artwork. Watch this space, however. You can see here I've drawn seven segment displays. Now normally if I was designing this for production I would have like four LEDs in a line on each segment, little surface mount LEDs which would be cheap and easily assembled. But whilst hunting round Farnell for displays I found these. Aren't they gorgeous? Not often I get excited about an electronic component, but aren't they lovely? And they are R RGB, three tri-colour, so you can have any colour you want out of them. Which is probably why they don't make individual colour ones, you just buy these. And I think, as the picture says, we are going to go with green. Okay, so we have here the trusty Tenma Super Dim power supply and some spaghetti so I'm going to dial up the data sheet uh, and we're going to try and fire one of these up okay so you can see it's a multi-comp pro it's not actually branded so <laughs> never mind we'll see uh, here it says recommended operating current 30 milliamps okay we will leave it 30 milliamps and here we have the pinout, which I am going to waste some paper and print out. Okay, so as you can see, there are four LEDs in series for each segment, only one for the decimal points. And again, if we go back up here, forward voltage is. 2, here we go, 2, 3.1 and 3.1 for R, G and B. So 4 3.1s is 12.4. So that is a little bit of an issue. We've got to drive it with 12.5 volts. However, our 10 mark will do that. So let's see what we can do. Okay. Pin 1 is that one, so we'll call that 1, and it goes down that side, so I'm presuming that's 14, that's 15, and that's No, 15 and that is 28. So let us say we want green, which is the clear one. Which is the middle of these. 12 the positive and okay, C 9 to 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9 to negative. Right. Uh, 
Okay, so we have red positive, blue negative. So let's fire the power supply up. Let's turn the voltage right down and the current. to 30 milliamps. So if I short them together, nothing happens. Well, because I've got no voltage. So we're going to set one volt and that will give 28 volts 74 milliwatts right so these on here without short circuiting I'm going to get a couple of bits of scrap paper Right, but the chances of that staying on there, very small I would say. Right, it's upside down but we don't care. So we are going to turn the voltage up. Ah, well that's not bad. That's 9 volts. Oh. Oh, sheesh, that's bright. Hmm. I just blown that up. <sighs> well, how annoying is that? It's this rather useless, clunky way of setting the current and voltage. I managed to set one amp and 30 milliamps and blithely turned the voltage up and have blown one of the green segments up in this display. So here we are on another segment, a bit more careful, and it's 9.1 volts. So if I turn this up, so 10.5 volts, it actually Ten and a half volts it comes on. Well even at nine, at ten, it's starting to come on reasonably bright, and at ten and a half or so it actually gets up to a milliamp. Uh, so we go up to eleven, twelve, we've got twenty-three milliamps. And it flips twenty-eight milliamps at about twelve volts. But that is lovely and bright. So, that's absolutely great. Apart from the fact I've fried one of the segments on this display. Hmm. Annoying. So, okay. We have it set to 3 volts. I wouldn't expect it to do anything and the current is set to 30 milliamps as it should be so we're gonna 
ramp up the voltage we should get a blue segment here nope what have I done? positive 2 Twenty two, twenty eight, twenty seven, twenty six, twenty five, twenty four, twenty three, twenty two. Hmm. No, no, hang on, it's different. They're not common. Six. Right, okay. Right, so the blue is that one on pin six will give me D. I think, or E. It's not actually clear, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So we've got 7.9 volts now, so sure we crank the volts up gently oh yeah we've got some blue appearing there oh look at that and they're really evenly illuminated you can't tell there's four separate LEDs down there and we still haven't oh yeah we've two milliamps so 12 and a half volts for 30 milliamps Hmm. Oh, I want to use blue now. Hmm, beautiful. Right. Well, it works, except it's one green segment down because I've fried it. Hmm. Bother. Words to that effect. Okay, so. Just for the sake of that, I fired up the red orange one, and that looks very pretty too. And that one's a bit lower voltage, runs at 8 odd volts instead of 12 odd volts. So, the next question is how are we going to generate this voltage? Um, we're generally going to run 3 volt, 3V3 three and 5 volt rails in this thing, and, uh, and we need, well, we need some kind of a current limit resistor and we need a switch which will is a ULN 2003 uh, which will drop near half a volt, point eight of a volt. So we probably need more than 12 volts at our rail up here to drive our display. Now <clears throat> Originally, I bought and ordered this, uh, which takes well, it'll run off the 5 volt rail in and outputs 15 volts, which should be enough. But I'm sort of going over to thinking we could run it off the supply because once the engine's running, there's 14 to 14 and a half volts there, which should be enough. So I might, when I come to Lay out the circuit board, uh, just put links in so that we can put this in and use this or run straight off the supply and see how it goes. Uh -huh, so that is the display for now. I think I will order another of these because I do want to use the green really. Um, what else? Well, there are these guys which indicate what units we're using and what act we're actually displaying. Now I was looking for a big block thing with an LED in it. Some kind of like LED front panel illuminator that was big, not necessarily that shape. And couldn't find one. We'd find some fairly large round ones but they were quite expensive. So what I've decided, so what, how this will work is the front panel, okay, the front panel of the box is clear and this will be a, 
basically a vinyl sticker. Uh, hopefully we can find somewhere that will make vinyl stickers with clear holes in them, which will be that, and the MPH will be printed on the sticker. And what we want to do is make a... Uh, somehow a block illuminated with an LED or two. Now, they do this for the backlights of LCD displays, so it must be fairly straightforward to do. So we are going to take some Perspex acrylic plexiglass, depending on where you come from, and we're going to try and make these, make some of these, and then it'll just have a standard red, green or yellow LED in. So that's one thing. Okay, so the thing's recording where it is with the GPS as it's going along, so surely it would be sensible to have some kind of a data recorder in there so you could have a, a log of where you were and how fast you were going, etc, etc. Uh, so to that effect I have bought, I don't know whether you can see this through the, through the bag, I don't want to take it out of the bag because I'll just lose it. That's a micro SD card reader, now that's something I've never done, so we, we will together learn how to read and write to SD cards. And once we've done that we'll need to get the data in and out. Uh, and because it works outside it needs to be a waterproof box and I don't want to drill. We have to drill some holes for the power, a hole for the power wires. But I don't want to have to drill a hole for an SD card or a USB lead. Um, so that's just the, the S, an SD card is just the way of putting in cheapest easiest way of putting in a couple of gigabytes of memory. And as I say I want to have a go at, at uh, learning how to use one. So something else I mean I originally thought was this Just put another little FTDI serial board in, but again that would be a hole in the box. So I thought instead I would try Bluetooth. Not done any Bluetooth before, so I have, and it isn't here yet, but I have an order of Bluetooth modules. So we will look at that as well. And finally, last but not least, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but here we are. What's going to be driving it all? Another Nucleo F446, which um, is vast overkill for the job. Could use an Arduino, but um, I need the 64 pin chip for the IO to drive the displays. Yeah, I could put some sort of driver chips in, but I don't want to. Don't want to be bothered. And uh, I've already. Just sort of, well, I've standardised on these really. Uh, it just means I can swap them between projects because I'm always using the same board. And the cheaper one, this was about £20, and maybe the cheap I could have got one that would have worked for £15, but it's a one off, who cares? Okay, so that is it. So I think I'm going to call it here for this video. Um, try and keep them. Um, reasonable length and um, and keep them coming out reasonably fast as I say but I've been away so there won't be many videos out. Uh, so what we might tackle next is these blocks. I've got some bits of acrylic in around so we'll find out how to try and make an even area of illumination from an LED um, because we sort of need to know that before I can start laying out a circuit board. The circuit board will be around that size. So that will be the next video um, and until then I will take my leave. Uh, so for now it's a goodbye from Triplicate. Goodbye.